real quick you guys if you are in waterford lake orion um, orchard lake area this is the uh, local bait shop it's called the bait shop actually and it's right here on airport road and um these guys got everything so uh as far as live bait tackle it's probably one of the best supplied bait shops locally so um next to places like bass pro and stuff like that this place actually has a nicer selection and a lot of the stuff they have is always in stock so right there bait shop that's 2574 airport road welcome back to the channel everybody if you're new here welcome i'm luke pulaski this this is the outdoor conquest um today i'm just gonna you know a little leisurely ice fishing i'm gonna call it i'm gonna go after some pan fish I'm gonna still set a few tip ups for pike. Try to get a pike, cause I haven't, I'm still grinding out to try to catch a big 40 inch pike. But I wanna do a catch and cook uh, pan fish video for you guys, just to break it up a little bit, do something different. If you guys are wondering why I wear these big goofy glasses, it's because I lost my uh, really nice sunglasses <laughs> and uh, the snow blinds me. And these are actually really nice, help keep my face warm. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to wear these for the next few trips anyway. So get used to seeing me with the big goofy uh, snow goggles on. It's bitter cold out. With the wind chill, it's gotta be like close to sub-zero temps. We just got done with this nasty winter storm. Got the whole setup. Auger, got everything, got jaw jackers, got tip up, got the iFish Pro. Uh, I only got a couple hours, so I'm not gonna be popping up the shanties. So it's gonna be tough fishing in these elements, but gonna do it anyways and uh, hopefully get a nice mess of pan fish for you guys and uh, do a little catch and cook for you. So hope you guys enjoy, stick around. All right guys, so we've arrived. A little bit of walk. I'm gonna punch a few holes. I've got some live bait here, a uh, couple sucker minnows, a couple shiners, iFish Pro. I got the jaw jackers in here, still for my ice fishing trip. So I gotta kind of rework those, but I'm gonna get the iFish Pro in first with a live bait and then work my way across this break a little bit and see if we can't get a couple of pike. The camera angles might be a little different than what you guys are used to seeing with me because I'm uh, trying to get things set up. And uh, sometimes, you know, I always get the camera gear set up first. But I'm just trying different things so I can capture every second of every trip I'm on. So I've got a chest cam on and uh, I'm gonna roll this while I'm setting up. I fish pro, I picked up a couple bells from the uh, bait shop today to try on my jaw jackers. As if you can't hear that thing go off already, but in case I'm not somewhat close to it, maybe, uh, maybe it'll help with being able to hear all that. Okay, I fish pro. I've yet to catch one on this guy, so here's the wishing because uh, I'm due. I'm due. What do we want to put on this one, guys? What do you think? Shiner or a chub sucker? I'm going to throw this big guy on there. I want to catch a big fish. Got him. Oh, had him. You know the drill, buddy. 36 extra, extra heavy. So that baby's stiff. And I got a quick strike rig here, steel leader, and uh, you know the drill. So I'll take my other glove off here. Not sure where my bobber stop's set up at. Right in the snout, and he can do his thing. Oh yeah, a oh, big pike's gonna see that. This one here wasn't hooked so well. One thing you gotta pay attention to, I guess I may have to hook him in front of the dorsal. There we go. There. Should stay hooked up that way. Works so in theory. I've yet to catch fish on it, but when a fish grabs at that bobber stop, pulls on that, and uh, releases that trigger, boom, flag goes up. So it works like a traditional tip up, I guess, but beauty of it is we get to we get to bring them in with a rod and reel and then just to adjust your depth like that you can put your uh 
slide your bobber stop and done. So, I think I'm about a foot off the bottom. We'll call that good. All right, so we moved a little bit and a little bit out closer to the drop. Nine foot of water. Ooh, looks like there's some weeds here too. Nine foot of water. I'm gonna put a, uh, I'm gonna set a tip up here with a big dead bait because my jaw jackers are still set up for walleye fishing. So I gotta put my leaders on those. I wanna get some baits soaking is the idea here. I wanna get some baits soaking and then uh, I can mess with them jaw jackers a little bit and get them, get them back and ready to go for pike fishing. It's their dead bait himself. Ooh, looks like he stinks too. Oh. I tell you what guys, if you can't get a fish to bite them stinky dead baits, um that it's just a bad day of fishing because these things stink. They're like pike candy. In the reason I use this big hook for these dead bait, because if you don't have the right setup, you know, if you're fishing a dead bait, some suckers can float upside down sometimes. So this helps with, I like to take my glove off for this one. This helps with just keeping it able to hang straight. See, it's so much nicer when they're thought out. I'm really glad I, uh, this one's been thought out for a little bit. Look at that, guys. And so he's gonna hang like that. So even though dead, it's got a lifelike feel to it, I'll call it. And it stinks. And that's, you know, big pike. Like, the reason I fish dead bait is because if you're looking for a big fish, big fish like big bait, small fish will too, but I'm after the biggest fish in the lake sometimes. With that, you need big bait. We got them right where we want them, so. That's good. Two in. Trying to find guys. I got it. I got the bail open. I got the bail open on that. Thought we had him. Nobody home. But we're back. Good gill.
largemouth. Beautiful largemouth. Oh, here we go. It's coming up for it. Beautiful looking pumpkin seed. Big mark. Got a big gill there. Nice gill. Wow, look at that, you guys. That thing's huge. We gotta get back down there because there's more of that size. It's still there. Come on. Come on, baby, get down there, get down there, get down there. Oh, he's still there. Come on, where you at? Come on back. Come on back, where you at? And that one showed up three feet off the bottom or so. Might be where the bigger gills are. Big fish, big fish. Oh, he's gone. I mean, just like that, he was there. That's why they're in here. Oh, there's a good fish there. Just showed up. Oh yeah, they're coming now. You can see it. Yeah. Decent one. Got a bunch down there now though.
All right, guys, so we got a nice mess of bluegill. Uh, the bite really picked up towards the end of the trip here. I, I actually stayed later than I was supposed to. So um, anyways, got a nice mess of bluegill. I got to get ready for work. But the next time I see you guys, we'll be in either the kitchen or on the filet table. And I'm going to be cleaning these fish up. But for now, I'm froze to the bone. All right, guys, so I got my mess of bluegill here. I'm going to go ahead and clean these babies up and uh, head into the kitchen and get the uh, grease going and get them fried up. So let's get after it. Okay, everybody, we made it to the kitchen. We've got the bluegill filleted, uh, ready to go, ready for the batter. I'm going to do a dry, wet, dry batter, give it a little extra crunch. Um, I suggest eating fish as fresh as you can. I mean, if you got a bunch, freeze a little, but man, nothing beats fresh fish. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get these babies battered up and into the deep fryer. Okay, so we're trying the Louisiana seasoned crispy fish fry. Um, I'm a sucker for a good fish batter. I have yet to find one that stands out above the rest. I haven't tried this one yet. I really like Andy's, but the thing with Andy's is what I'm noticing is that it's super salty. So we're gonna try this one out, see how it tastes. If you guys got one you recommend, uh, leave it in the comments. I'd appreciate it. I'm always looking for new batters to try. We're gonna do dry, wet, dry. Give it a good dry. And this is beer. I got beer in there, so this will just help it uh, get a little extra crunch. And it helps hold that batter on there when you put it in the deep fryer. All right, so I'm going to go through and finish these and then uh, get them into the deep fryer. All right, guys, the bad boys are done. Got one more batch to run. And we'll give her a taste test. All right, guys, so here it is. Finished product. Awesome looking bluegill, man. This stuff is has a nice golden, golden uh, batter to it. And I'll give you a closer look here. Super crispy and uh, perfectly white, white fillets, man. I guarantee this is gonna be delicious. Louisiana seasoned crispy fish fry batter. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but super crunchy. Absolutely delicious. Although I'm a big fan of Andy's for the flavor. I don't like how salty it is. If I could combine the crunchiness of the Louisiana fish fry batter with the flavor of the Andes, I might be onto something there. So maybe it's something I'll try. Appreciate you guys for watching. If you made it this far, I can't thank you guys enough for the support. It means the world to me. All you guys watching, once again, thank you. Stick around because I got some exciting videos coming up here soon. Hope you guys enjoy them. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next one.